Hi and welcome to another Tabless Glass Emporium YouTube video. Today I wanted to think about a project I needed to do which was a commission piece. I have a very dear friend at the studio who works for me and it's her, one of her big birthdays, we're not going to tell which, um, and I wanted to do a really wonderful gift for her to say thank you. Now she loves her dogs, she has had her dog Miller for a few years and she recently got a new puppy called Stig who's a French Bull Terrier, um, Miller's a Staffy, and I wanted to give her something with her dogs in because I know how much she loves them. Now, I went round and saw her husband <laughs> and said to him, please, can I have some photos of your, the dogs? And I took some photos and he sent me one. Now, one of the ones I took of um, Stig worked really well. Um, uh, Stig was side on, and I knew I wanted to sort of, you know, to tilt his head in and be coming in. And then this one was a Miller which was sort of sitting you know, um, ni nicely in greenery. So I thought those would work really well. And then once I had them, I resized them to the size I wanted the project to be. Now this is the project, this is the completed piece. Um, I really loved how it turned, it turned out. Uh, you know, I know that she took to the, um, takes the dogs for a walk in a kind of meadow, so I wanted the feeling of meadow. Normally around here there's always trees at the edge of the meadow, so I wanted the trees and I love this idea of having this kind of main tree in the foreground. Um, again, you know, deciding to not do the dogs um, next to each other, to not do them, to do them different, um, sort of different perspectives. Stig is like cheeky, cheeky little dog. He's so funny and sweet. And I kind of wanted him to be looking in at the side of the frame going, hello, look at me. And um, Miller's more reserved. She's a rescue dog and completely gorgeous. But she's, you know, she's quite reserved and a bit more laid back. So I wanted her to be kind of, sort of further away in the picture. So like she's a bit more reserved, like she is. Um, so I'm really pleased how this turned out, and I wanted to show you how we went through the process of making this. Of course, I used Tina to do the um, the dogs and the enamels. She's brilliant at that, and I then decorated the rest. I think collaboration is great in pieces. Sometimes you can find someone who does other things. Um, that work better for you and uh, in, and that can work really well. Um, recently we you know, did the bunny piece in which Tina um, painted and someone's come to us and said you know they, could we do them a bunny painted and we've done that for them. So if there's any pieces like that that you would like oh I'm no good at enamels but maybe Tabitha's Glass Emporium we can make that for you send us a photograph we'll you know to certain sizes we can do and we can make those pieces for you at a very reasonable price. So always contact us if you have any projects like that that you want our help with. So this is how today I'm going to show you how I made this particular piece for my very good friend, Anna. So here I have my piece of glass. Now I just want to kind of think about um, what I'm putting where and I'm going to have a kind of um, sort of horizon there and then I want some bigger trees here and then that will be sky. So I'm now going to put my powders out thinking about that because I want a fairly um, uh, sort of straight line for this. I'm actually going to use a piece of paper um, as a guide. I'm just trying to make sure that it's you know not going really up or down on the on the glass. Just using the grid. There we go. So now I've got some spring green here. I'm going to start putting this down. Remember, if you're using powders, please wear masks. Quite a lot of powder needs to go on. This is a big piece of glass. And I want a good saturation of colour. Making sure I'm going right over the edges. Yes, I'm going to lose some powder here. Um, you can always reclaim your powders from the edges. I don't tend to, uh, except to put them in what I call magic brown, because I always feel that you get a bit of... So let's say if I reclaim this, the next colour down, I could always reclaim the first colour, but I always think the second colour, the likelihood is some of the grains from this colour are going to fall as well, be pushed over, and you're going to get a little bit of contamination. Um, so that's why I don't reclaim as much as I should. Um, so that was that. I'm going to put some pea pod on this to just going to swap my jars out. I want to make sure I don't 
it's always quite important that you make sure your sieve is completely empty, which with these ball sieves can sometimes be hard to see um, before you put it back inside. So there was a bit of powder there. If I'd gone into, let's say, a blue now, I could have put some of that green and contaminate it, and particularly if it's reactive. You know, it's easy, very large jars. That would be bad. Um, so that's that. I'm just going to put a little bit of a venturi, light venturi, on here just to sort of splodges. I like it for some texture. So that's that. Um, now I'm going to move this up a little bit. Actually, I want a softer line here. So I'm going to take that off now and then just clear that. Get the sky. I've got some light cyan here. Now light cyan does react with a lot of these greens, so I don't mind a little bit of reaction. Sometimes it can look quite nice, particularly on tap views when you don't get much. So again, I want a good layer of this light cyan like I had for the And just because I like to use a couple of different colours, I'm going to use a little bit of um, turquoise blue. because this is like my trees so I'm using deep forest so I don't mind if the deep forest goes into the green below or the blue above it's not reactive and the line of trees is not always seldom completely straight. Doesn't matter, I put my finger down there, it will all add to the texture of it. Making sure that they're not kind of spaced um, right next, you know, equally apart. So I want to have that feeling of kind of organic trees, have some smaller, thinner ones as well. So now I just want to add some frit. Um, oh, we've got some avocado. It's quite a new frit. That it's not you know, it was readily available. And I'm going to build this up with various other coloured frits as well. So I've got some of our swallows. I just want to put them in the sky above. Um,
I love it when I see the swallows come back. It really makes me feel like we're sort of more summery around here. Yeah. Didn't necessarily want one rolling all over the piece though. Okay, so I think that's good. Um, I'm gonna put it in the kiln now and we can see how this looks and add the extra elements next. So for the tree, I had a pre-fused tree trunk. I did it for another project that I never ended up doing. You know what these things you have hanging around. But if you don't, I've just used various different types of brown glass. This has been sandblasted, so it's why it's looking um, sort of matte at the moment. Um, I used some petrified wood and some um, uh, uh, brown, uh, I'm trying to think of the, the color. I want to say forest brown, but I think that's green, woodland brown. Um, here and I've used some stringers so you know that's my tree trunk fully fused together and now I'm just going to add some leaves so this will all be just tack fused together with some leaves um, I've got some of our um, green kind of variegated ones um, two different colors just because it's what I had around um, and I'm going to put these on the branches and then it can go in the kiln we'll see it when it's ready to come out really ready to go in even so here it is um, it's ready to go in the kiln We've overlapped the leaves. You can see that we make sure that we overlap them so that they all tack used together. If we just buttered them up against the, um, against the tree like this, there's a possibility it would pull away. So we always make sure that we overlap a little bit to, um, so it all tack fuses together well. Um, added some spring blossom as well and a couple of bluebirds, gives it a bit of colour and it's now ready to go in the kiln to be fired on a nice light, light tack fuse. Long and ill, lots of layers going on, so we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. So here's the base out of the kiln, and then here are the two, um, uh, our two figures to go on top. Um, so I am going to just, I want to add some things. So we have the tree going over like this, and then I just want to add, you know, various other bits that I like to add. Um, I, just put, I just, you know, want to add some texture. So I'm just going to add some of this coarse fritz sort of at the front. This is the extra large. Um, I've also got some of them just for. Um, and I want to sort of add some. Um, what would feel like grasses. I'm just going to put a blob of glue just on there just to help hold these down. I'm going to add quite a lot of this so I'm just going to get on and put these on and then we can have a look how it's looking. So as you can see I've interspersed grasses and added a little bit more to the front. I'm now just going to dot around some flowers um, around our kind of meadow scene to just sort of add a kind of floral touch. I might also just add a bit more um, in the background. I want to sort of put a bit of fritz and like maybe some blossom on these trees in the background like there were um, on the tree in the foreground we put blossom. So um, I'm going to do that and then we can have a look. It'll be ready to go in the kiln. We can have a look at it just before it goes in the kiln. So here it is, ready to go in the film. It's going to be very, very long, slow. Um, slow firing this one We've got lots of layers going on lots of cry factor so we want to make sure it's all good you can see we've added a bit more frit to the trees um gives them kind of that extra dimension feels like some are coming forward and some are going back a bit more 
um, and it really feels like it's a sort of woodland in the background and this is a kind of meadow in the middle. Um, so we just really hope everything comes out really well now. Let's put it in and see how it looks. <laughs> so here is this out of the kiln. Um, we have the tree as well. We've glued to the back of the tree pieces of glass and now we're just going to glue the tree over here and then we can have a look how the final piece looks. So here it is all glued together and ready to give to this amazing lady here. This is for Janice. This is her two dogs, her new puppy Stig, who's a French bulldog, is that right? Yes. And uh, Mila, who's a staffy, who is, I have to say, I'm quite in love with Mila. She's so great, although Stig is awesome too. Um, and this is, you know, one of our collaborative pieces. Tina did the enamels um, and I designed the piece. I kind of really wanted Stig's head to be kind of coming out going, yeah, hello. Um, and uh, as I said before, and just kind of how to design it and into a piece that kind of worked for this amazing lady for a special birthday for her, to say to her thank you so much for all her hard work and having this glass and pouring. She's brilliant and we are so lucky to have her. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> so I really hope you've enjoyed this video and it inspires you to maybe make a commission piece for someone you love. Um, we've showed you the processes of how we did it and came to, together to do this fantastic piece. It's lovely giving someone a piece that's unique for them and um, really obviously, you know, um, sings to their soul and uh, makes them, you know, takes them to their happy place. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember all our amazing Marini at tablasglassemporium.com. Sign up for our newsletter. You never know what fantastic news or products are coming out next. Remember, we are the sweet shop for all your glassy needs. Until next time, happy fusing.